Cowboy Slim by Julie Dannenberg and Margot Apple. I've always wanted to be a real cowboy, Slim confessed to the other ranch hands on his first day of work at the W.J. Ranch. Slim loved being a cowboy. He loved the way his boots kicked up the scent of silver green sage. He loved the way a newborn calf looked at him with long lashed velvet brown eyes. He especially loved sitting by the flickering fire and savoring the smoky taste of pork and beans. At night, back in the bunkhouse, while the other cowboys slept, Slim wrote poems about what he loved. He couldn't help it. He thought about his day, and pretty soon the words tumbled out, one after the other across the paper, like puppies playing in the yard. Sometimes, just before turning in, he'd saunter outside to recite under the dark, blue, flannel sky. And as he spoke, with, with words as soft and warm as a broken-in quilt, the cows stopped a snorting and mooing in the corral, and the horses stopped a stomping and neighing in the field, and the lonely coyote on the hill stopped howling in the middle of its song. Moon, silver, soft shimmer, chases shadows away. Stars shine and glimmer, a twinkling bouquet. Wind whispers through treetops, a low whooshing song. Hush, hush, says the river as it rushes along. Good night, calls the hoot owl, perched in the tree. Sleep tight, calls the darkness, wrapped tight around me. One morning, the cowboys found a stack of Slim's poems peeking out from under his bedroll. They got to acting all frothy, looking like they'd been raised on sour milk. <sighs> Real cowboys will whip those doggies into shape. They don't mess around with no fancy perfumed words, blustered Buster as he flicked the fly off the windowsill with his whip. Yeah, real cowboys ride better than they walk. They don't ride better than they talk, exclaimed Sally as she fed her horse buttermilk a carrot. Real cowboys use lasso, son. Poetry's sissy stuff if and yes me said Red as he lassoed figure eights in the air. Reluctantly, Slim stuffed his poems into his saddlebags and concentrated on becoming a real cowboy. One morning, Red met Slim at the door of the bunkhouse. Jangle your spurs, partner. We're taking a herd of cattle to Dodge City. While the cowboys burned the breeze toward the corral, Slim tried to saddle the get-up end of his horse. Buster snapped his bullwhip in the air until the herd lunged and lurched ahead like a steam engine pulling away from the station. Sally threaded buttermilk in and out of the tangled mess of cattle, weaving them into a single herd, and Red, his lasso forming a rawhide halo above his head, sent that loop a whizzing through the air and landed it snug around the corral gate. Move them out, Red yipped, and yee-hawed as he welcomed the herd onto the far-reaching ranch. Wait for me, yelled Slim, just before his horse dumped him to the ground. Paint, buckaroo, said Red. Only real cowboys ride in front, said Sally. You'll have to ride to boot, son, said Buster with a smile. So Slim took his place in the billowing cloud of trail dust at the back of the herd, and although the dust stung his eyes and the whittle wanging of the, of the ball and cattle tried his patience, the clip-clop rhythm of the ride started tapping itself into a poem in Slim's mind. The land stretches out. 
till it touches the sky. A whippoorwill sings, a raven flies by. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, Slim spied a calf trapped in a narrow ravine. Grabbing his lasso, he said, Here's my chance to be a real cowboy. Nah, it wasn't. As the river of cattle snaked and slithered its way past the red, red tinged, red tinged cliffs, the desert colors painted themselves into a poem in Slim's mind. Thunder clouds distant. Rumble with rain, crickets start creaking, a noontime refrain. Without warning, a heifer decided to go that away, even though the herd was ahead and this away. I can surely take care of this myself, Slim said. Hmm. He couldn't. After lunch, the scorching sun heated up the plains hotter than a chuck wagon's cook stove. If and we don't get these hot doggies a moving, they'll be roasted alive, said Buster. Slim rode toward the herd, a hooting and a hollering, waving his Stetson with one hand and flapping his bandana with the other. The cattle never even looked up. I'm as out of place as a bull in a china shop, Slim said to himself. I best be leaving this work to the real McCoy. He turned his horse and hit the flats for home, riding away from the herd and his dream. As Slim rode off into the horizon, the afternoon dosy doed by and thunderclouds piled high in the hazy blue distance. A hush fell over the range, and a zing of electricity filled the air. The cattle snorted nervously. Sally, Buster, and Red tightened their grips on the reins. All of a sudden, a clap of thunder echoed off the canyon walls. Bang! A flash of lightning tore through the gray curtain of clouds. Rip! Red roped, Buster whipped, Sally galloped, but no matter what those crusty cowboys did, their cranky cattle kept heading full speed toward the edge of Dead Man's Canyon. Stampede! In no time flat, the herd caught up to Slim, sweeping him along like a feather in the wind. Hugging rawhide, he bent over his horse's neck. To calm his own fears, Slim began a talking, his voice as warm as spring pure sunshine and as sweet as new prairie grass. And as he spoke, the riled up cattle running right next to him got sort of curious. Picking up their ears, they slowed just a little and strained to listen. Slim noticed the change in the herd. He started belting out words as clear and refreshing as a high mountain stream. Lightning and thunder won't put you under. No need to fear. This cowboy is near. Gosh darn it, if even more of those spooked cattle didn't cool their heels. They stopped twitching and a quivering and put on the brakes. Booming out his poems louder than an afternoon thunder guster, Slim kept on raining words as he skidded to a stop at the very edge of the cliff. The cattle stopped too. Coyotes might howl. At night they will prowl. No need to fear. This cowboy is near. Slim took a deep breath, his heart chugging faster than a runaway locomotive. The other cowboys arrived in a dust cloud, a cloud of dust. Why, Slim, they called out in a cowboy chorus. You saved the herd. Slim brushed the dust off his chaps and wiped his forehead. 
don't matter none, he said. I still can't rope, whip, or ride. Dag, nebbit, Slim. Son, last I that heard with your words, Red said. You sure enough whip those doggies into shape, agreed Buster. And your riding wasn't half bad, son, said Sally. Clem ruminated on their words for what seemed like a long while. Then his face broke out in a grin as wide as the Rio Grande. Well, ain't that a dinger. I guess I'm more than a catalog cowboy after all. Later on, when the gang was getting the cattle back on the trail, Clem trotted to his usual place behind the herd. Buster called out, Hey, Slim! Don't you know? Real cowboys ride in front. And as they rode off into the sunset, Slim said, Hey, Red, how about a lasso lesson? Plenty of time for that later, amigo, Red said. Right now, I need a word that rhymes with doggies. <laughs>